Hey everyone, welcome to KC 3D Sparks. Today we're going to be going over how to model something with a picture reference. So say you're scrolling through Pinterest or you're just surfing through the web and you find something and you're like, oh my gosh, I need that in my game. That is so cool. That's kind of how I felt about this image, which I did find on Pinterest when I was looking at that. Um, and so I thought this would just be really cool either if the crystal you could say is the light and it's um, dotting a path or something like that. Anyway, trying not to get up too off topic here, we're going to be importing this into Blender and going over how to model it. So obviously you'll go ahead, we're going to start by setting up our scene in Blender. So you will want to of course go to your unit presets like normal. I like to do inches, um, you can do centimeters or whatever your preference is, but then we're going to go ahead and pop open the end menu, and right now the box is two inches, cool, we'll just leave that for now, no worries there. And then, like normal for me, this is personal preference, I'll go ahead change the grid floor like normal, if I can, to 0.25. Perfect, so that way each inch has a couple boxes in there. And perfect, so all that is set up. So the only other thing we need is our image. So you'll see this right here, background images. I'll go ahead and open this a little bit better. And we're going to check that box so we can actually use it. And we're gonna hit add image. This will pop down. We'll go ahead and hit open, which will open our file directory. I just placed my image right on the desktop and it's this I should have renamed it but I didn't and that will open in here now you're like okay where's the image can't see it well it only shows in certain camera viewpoints so if you hit one and then hit five to get out of the perspective view you can actually see the image so front view side view top view it's just, it's in every view so obviously I'm not going to be modeling it from the top or anything. Now let's say we had like a character or something else where the side is different. Like obviously this one is pretty much the same all the way around except for the snake. Um, you can go ahead and add another image and set it up so that way like say you have another image down here and this picture is the front view and the other picture is the side view you can change it in this top menu here so this one will only show in the front and your other one will only show on the right. So if I go to the front view you can see it here but as soon as I switch to the right view it's gone. Very very cool but I'm just going to leave this on all since we just are going to use this for all of our views and we'll get rid of this other image here. Now one other thing that is not quite right obviously is the size and also it is a little bit tilted and once we resize it it's probably going to get off center. So first let's take care of the size so right now it's at 10 inches but even that's a little bit wrong because what we're looking at is the actual top and bottom of the actual product if you will itself and not the whole picture. So we'll go ahead and resize this to one inch for now and then modify it from there. Um, which if you remember before, this is set up to two inches. So sometimes this size itself is already a little bit wonky. So we'll want to go off of our grid. That's why I like to set that up in the beginning as well. It's because for the picture in um, picture reference, we'll go ahead and use this grid to actually size it properly. So I want it to be, I guess two inches isn't too bad. That's pretty big. I'm going to probably do maybe inch, inch and a half, but we'll just go ahead and set it up a little bit smaller and we can reset. Ooh, that's very dramatic. Um, oh, actually that's perfect. Okay. So obviously you can scroll back and forth just like normal, or you can type in or use the little arrows just like anything else um, with the blender menus. You can also change the opacity if you want it to be pretty faded into the background or if it's like, okay, I want this very present. I usually like to leave it somewhere in the middle. I don't need to mess with that too much unless I have overlapping images to create one piece. 
Um, and of course, if it's the wrong direction, you can flip it if you need to, uh, which is very convenient. And also the rotation, now that it's set up, I do want to have this rotated a little bit because if we're picturing a line going down the center, it's a little off, not bad, but it's a little off. So we'll go ahead and line this up a little bit better. I think a little bit something like that actually looks great. And then we can move it, whoo, not that far. Let's do 0 0.05, not even that far. 0 0.005. Eight. Now this part's a little bit of guesswork, but once you get it, oh, one more I think should do it. Perfect. Oh, actually, it's a little off, but we can work around it. That'll be fine. Obviously, the pictures, unless you draw it yourself, I mean, is not going to be made to be modeled after unless, you know, that was its original purpose. Um, but, yeah, I mean, of course, you can use your own drawings as reference as well, which can be even more awesome because then you're going to draw it exactly how it would be modeled. Anyway, okay, so that's pretty much everything that you'll want to use in this. There's a couple other options, but we don't need to go over those for what we're doing today. So I'm just going to hit end to get rid of that menu. And now that we're all set up, um, what you want to do with a picture is just kind of analyze how you want to model this first. I mean, just like with any other model, it's like, okay, what should I start with? I'm pretty sure we shouldn't start with a box because it is cylindrical. Um, it's probably just not a good choice. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this box. I personally would like to start with a circle. Um, this can be personal preference, um, but typically cylindrical things, I don't like starting with a cylinder. I'd rather start with a circle and just have that immediate ring of vertices to work with and extrude where I need to rather than having that already extruded and working off of that. You could rather, you know, if you want to start with a cylinder instead, be my guess, that is definitely personal preference. But for something that's definitely cylindrical, I like to start with a circle. Other things like um, characters or animals and other things like that typically it's more you'll probably want to start with a box or a cube if you will but it's definitely something like this I'll start with a circle so I'm going to take this down to 12 because we don't need 32 12 is good because I like to have one on each um, axis and then two in the middle it just makes it still somewhat round it's I don't know it's my preference again you can do more if you want but I think it's nice to keep it pretty clean in the beginning and then add more vertices just like I always do alright so let's go ahead and get this started I'm gonna size this in and we're gonna kinda start at this base here we're going to create the crystal first and then we'll work on the base. Um, so we're just going to get the basic shape of the crystal and since it has all these variations we're not going to worry about it being perfect until our model is all set and then we can mix up the top and have fun with like the rock formation at the bottom. So let's just get this basic shape. We're going to edit mode by hitting tab. We're going to hit E to extrude and just kind of make sure that's right. Yep size that in, E to extrude again, size that in, and we'll just do that for now for the bottom. I'm not going to fill the hole in, I'm going to leave that empty for now and you'll see why later. So let's hit Alt and right click to grab this whole loop here, E to extrude, grab this, go up to the top of the rock formation, size it in a little bit. And I'm going to just be kind of following the right side for now and not worrying too much about the left side. And E to extrude again, go up to about here, looks good. Size it, E, 
size it good enough for now. Cool, we have our super basic shape. Now what we will do is focus on getting this one leg of the pedestal modeled out because this part is going to be the same for each leg. So we'll just model the one and then I'll show you how to copy the rest in a second. So what we will do is, because it's the same on each side and I don't need to worry about the back half, I'm going to go ahead and delete this side early by doing B for box select. Ooh, did I go to the top? Hold on one second, try that again. X, delete the vertices, and now we're just doing the front half and we'll worry about getting the other half back momentarily. You'll see what I'm up to in a second. <laughs> so let's get this framed out. I'm gonna add a loop here, add a loop here, another one here. So this is the part where we need to look at our picture and see what the crystal rock formation is touching of the metal base. Um, so it's kind of like just this top diamond is t actually holding the crystal in place. So what we'll actually do is I'm going to grab this loop, pull it down just a little bit. Probably something like that looks good to make our first diamond. I'm going to add a loop here to where that is. Grab this and this. like that. Perfect. These two. And actually, I just had an idea. Instead of modeling it on both sides, I'm going to do something else. We're going to do like we just did and grab these vertices, delete them, add a mirror modifier with the clipping option. So we have that other half. We only have to do the one. Make sure Okay, good. You just want to make sure that none of them pull apart. Perfect. They're all attached. Grab this, pull that in. Awesome. Now what we will go ahead and do is grab all of these and we're going to hit E to extrude. We're going to go into side view and pull that out. About that far. We'll probably do it a little bit bigger than the picture is showing because we want to keep in mind when we're 3D printing it, it needs to be drastic enough for it to not just look like a little bump on the crystal. Like when we do these rock formations, we don't want it to just look like another bump on the rock. We want it to actually look like it's part of the metal piece. So if we're painting it afterward, we don't get confused. We're like, where does this end? Okay. And then, uh, that's pretty good. We'll make sure, yeah, it doesn't look like it did anything crazy. Sometimes when you extrude these um, on the seam, you'll want to make sure that no extra pieces get in here, and it looks like it did it properly this time. So, awesome. We'll go ahead and now grab these four vertices here. Go back into front view. E to extrude. Go down here. E to extrude again. Pull that over. We're going to ignore this wing part for right now. What we'll do instead is hit E to extrude, pull it all the way down here like that to where like the base of the wing-ish part is. Um, e to extrude, pull this down, and we're just going to keep doing that for a minute until, oh, okay, perfect, until we get to this part here, which that looks good. Okay, so we'll leave that alone for a second, and we'll get back to this. So we'll pull this all the way down. Awesome. A little further. Yeah, and we're going to flesh this out to be more of a circle. But for right now, we're just going to worry about the front base 
whoops, E, pull that in, pull that back up. To the base again, and this time, since his mouth is kind of in the way, I'm kind of looking at the left side for reference. That down to the center of the diamond, pull that out. A lot of this is guesswork, really just kind of what you're feeling, um, just like with modeling anything else. Awesome. Okay, so there is the generic shape of our leg, which actually itself looks kind of cool holding that. Um, perfect. Okay, so let's go back up to this part really quickly and oops, not too far there we go this part and we have this like winged piece right here so all of this is kind of jutted out a little bit but we'll go ahead and get the basic wing out here first so we'll go ahead and grab this face here e to extrude like normal pull this up Size it a little bit. E again. Rotate that. We're going to add a line here and pull that in. Awesome. So there's that basic shape. And now that's cool. Um, and we'll worry about it being raised after a bit. Once we get everything fleshed out, we can just grab basically everything and extrude it out um, and size it down a little bit. See how that works. But do that in a second. Let's go to the side view and try and flesh this out a little bit. So obviously this part is starting pretty good it does bow out more so what we'll do is just start grabbing these I usually you want to grab both but since it is being printed you want to make sure that the leg itself is thick enough to actually hold this giant crystal so obviously the picture is going to be a little bit modified or the 3D model, but I am going to try something for the proportional editing. Ooh, that's way too big. That's... Mm, I'm not sure how I'll like this, but sometimes it's nice to do the proportional editing when you err. Uh, yeah, proportional editing when you want to make sure it stays like a smooth crease so that way it isn't just you know, grabbing this vertice and it juts out. Oh, I didn't turn it off. I thought I did. Whoop! Juts out and then you have this weird triangle and then you're trying to smooth it out real nice. That's where this comes in handy. I think I've used it before, but not to this extreme. Okay, so let's try this out a little bit. So grab this one. Let's make this ring smaller do that. Awesome. Now I'm going to turn this off because this part here is where it essentially turns into the cylinder circle part. <laughs> I don't know how to describe that a little bit better, but let's pull this back and this back. And then see how that looks. That looks good. So now it's more of a regular square on the back, nice and flat. And to make sure it is flat, you can go into side view, hit S and Y. Oh, and now it's perfectly flat there. Awesome. We will go ahead and add a loop in the center. And then we're going to grab these two, go back into side view, and pull this out. What might be easier, honestly, and instead of trying to make this perfectly 
circular, it might be easier to just add in a torus and Boolean it. It would not be nearly as clean and, you know, it's kind of cheating using the Boolean so much, but we'll try to do it without and if it's too messy, we'll just go ahead and add in a torus and Boolean it. Yeah, that's just, you know, you know usually not too favored, but since we are just 3D printing it, it's not that big a deal. If you're using it for anything else, I would definitely say, you know, you want to try to keep your model as clean as possible, but for this, we'll give it a shot and see what happens. So let's just focus on getting the leg shape down. All right, we're gonna do that for now. I made it a little less dramatic, um, not too much, but just since we are modeling it this way, we don't wanna make sure it's not too top heavy or anything. We'll see what happens with this and go from there. Let's try this out. I think I do want to go ahead and focus on the foot really quick, and then we can go ahead and extrude out and get these like diamond fat faces and, um, this part up here with the little circle. So let's get this foot going. So as you can see, it's not necessarily a flare out. It kind of is resting on this torus that we'll put in soon, but we want to go ahead and yeah, bring this front part out. And let's go to the side view for that. We're going to go ahead and grab all of these. I will do this really small though. What we'll have to do is make sure it still looks okay once we attach the torus. So we'll probably have to revisit that before we add the other legs in and do um, put a torus in first. But let's go ahead and just add the detail. And we can worry about that later because even if it's not perfect, it should be fine. So let's do this part. So there's a couple different ways we could probably approach this. I think I want to go ahead and extrude this again. You could probably try to do a bevel or something for the edge and then just model out the diamonds and extrude them. But I think it would be a nicer finish if we go ahead and extrude everything. So instead of selecting vertices, we'll switch this to faces. We do want to disable that. And border select. That got a lot more than I expected. But we can go ahead and deselect those. Make sure nothing else crazy is selected. Awesome. We'll go ahead E to extrude. Cool, cool. We're just going to pop that out a little bit. And then we will size it. So if we size it, you can see that that's not quite right. So what we'll do is go ahead and just move it in a little bit along the x-axis first. Size it by the z-axis just a teeny bit. Might have to fix some of it, but it's not all supposed to be perfect anyway. I actually, I don't know, that actually worked out really well. However, I feel like, oh, it didn't do it. Oh, good, okay. So it looks like it didn't add any extra faces in the center, which is what I was kind of expecting to happen, but it didn't. Ooh, that's looking nice, okay. So that's that. Now we can go ahead, oh, I extruded those two. I didn't want to do that. Whoa, well, that's fine. We'll worry about that later. Okay, anywho, I want to add in some of these. I'm not sure how much of this I will get to, but what we will want to do is, since we are adding a torus, at least make it this line. So let's go ahead and fix that really quick. So we'll grab these two. Pull that over there. Pull this up here. Grab this, go about there, slightly in, and we will want to go ahead and add a loop here. 
and pull that in as well. Like that. Perfect. Can I do... No, I cannot. Yeah, that wouldn't make sense if I could. Okay, so now that that's perfect, what we will do is add another one here so we can start getting this diamond shape. Okay, now that we have that modeled out to where it's like, okay, I can keep adding detail all day if I really wanted to, but to get on with the point of the video as far as making sure it looks like the actual image that we pulled off of the internet, let's go ahead and just accept this as it is. I will go ahead and duplicate it just in case, so let's get out of edit mode. I like to duplicate certain things to make sure like I always have a point to go back to because you can hit control Z as many times you want but it's gonna you know not keep all of your history so I'm just going to duplicate this now I'm going to apply this and then we will have to set the origin to the geometry go into edit mode we'll select everything whoops Go into the top view, rotate it negative 45 degrees, except we don't want it to rotate that way. We want it to rotate per the 3D cursor, so we will rotate negative 45 that way. Awesome. Now what we'll do is add two loops in right here and right here. So that way we can select these, delete select these, delete, go over here, add our mirror modifier back, so there's our X side, we'll go ahead and apply the clipping, and our Y, why are you doing that? Uh, what? Oh, there we go. I'm not sure why I was having such an issue with the mirror modifier that time, but at least I got it to work. Sometimes messing with the origin point will get your mirror modifier to work how you want it to. Perfect. Oh, that looks very cool. Obviously, it's a little blocky, but we can add in a subdivision surface modifier later. For this video, I think you guys get the gist of it. I'll go ahead and make another duplicate so I can come back and work on that for myself later. But just to show you guys how to finish this, um, you would go ahead, go back in here. You can add your variations to your crystal so first you would have to apply the mirror modifier you can face this off if you want or what might be better since it's a crystal extrude that and have it come this way so that way it's you're not stuck with that one flat face and you can make this varying edges you can make it match the picture if you want or do your own crystal facings then what you will want to do is add in your toruses. So, whoop, okay, let's size that down. I'm going to leave it as is. You could have redone how many vertices and loops and whatnot there were, but for the sake of time, again, I'll go ahead and try and speed this process up. I forgot to change this. There we go. A little bit too thick, huh? How do I... There's a way to... Change the... Yeah. 
you want to change this. Make it a little bit thinner first. Because that was a little bit too thick. Let's try this Taurus out. Oh, I added it in edit mode. Whoops, don't do that. Let's fix that really quick. You don't want to add it in edit mode because then you won't be able to boolean it together. Taurus. Minor radius stayed perfect. Size this in. Size it. Move this down. I might have made it too thin. Dang it. Actually, that looks pretty good. Awesome. So if you guys have any questions or concerns, of course, you know, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to answer any. Um, but to add this in really quickly before you get into doing any other details, we'll add ply, the rotation and scale, ply subdivision surface modifier. Nope. No, we are not. I did not like that. We'll just delete that for now. We're going to do the Boolean modifier just so you can see how to do that really quick. Of course, this is one of the last things you would do, but we're just skipping that since a lot of my other videos have been about detailing models. Change that to Union. We need four of them. We'll do this Taurus. This one. That one. And the last one. Then you can apply each of those, and there you go. Obviously, you want to make sure there's no holes or anything weird up with the mesh before you try and print anything or upload to Shapeways or whatever you're trying to do. But again, if you have any questions, please just let me know in the comments, any suggestions of what you would like to see in the future. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. I really appreciate any feedback, and I will see you guys next time.